Beachy Properties is a REIT I've been buying every single day. It is one you should also consider too. We're going to run through why that is in today's episode. We'll look at the historical performance of Vici. We'll take a look at their top line revenue growth year on year, as well as their bottom line net income, as well as what to expect from their earnings call tomorrow. We're going to take a look at the health of this company, their quick look at their cash versus their updated total debt. And we'll see whether the industry as a whole has been performing well or whether there have been any struggles across their competitors. We'll look at the institutions in the more recent quarter to see whether they have been buying shares of Vici or not. We'll also run them through the insider buying and screening seller to see whether or not we have any indications from management where the share price could go. We'll also talk about their dividend safety score of 50, borderline safe. We'll run through a lot of the updated financial metrics. We'll look at their net debt to EBITDA. And we'll also just touch upon some different operationals that they have had over the last few months and what they are doing to expand their company and their properties. And we'll just very briefly run through some of their essential tenants, the number of properties, and some pointers of why we like this company. We'll also take a look at the valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value, as well as our acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety, and look towards Wall Street to see what they're forecasting over the next 12 months. So let's jump straight into it so we can see their historical performance. Now they are down 12% over the last year. And if you've been holding them over the last five years, you can see you would be up 39%. Bear in mind that doesn't include those dividends reinvested and we can see their all-time highs around summer 2022 just under $36. Currently now they are trading in the mid to lower end of the 52 week range with a yield of 5.6% and a P to FFO of 12.51. Now, typically for REITs, what we tend to target is around 5 to 10% growth to the top line. Vici 2018, 900 million reported on that top line revenue. And when we look at December 2022, their latest annual report, 2.7 million. And what we're expecting from tomorrow's earnings is around that 3 to 3.5 million. So some more growth from the previous year. And we can see on a more granular level, 2018 to 2019, pretty much flat. But on then we go and we can see those nice increases year on year as well as the expectation for tomorrow. In terms of their bottom line net income, again, a fairly similar story. Nil more than doubled 524 million in 2018, 1.1 billion in 2022. And again, on a more granular level, we actually see increases every single year, year on year. And we are expecting a strong stellar bottom line for 2023 at around 2.3 to 2.4 million. So looking very nice on their top line and their bottom line. Now when we have a quick look at their total cash versus their total debt, they held around 578 million of cash in 2018. Their latest quarterly report showed pretty much a very similar amount, 511. Now when we compare that 511 amount versus their total debt, very typical for REITs, we do see it very high going from 4.1 billion to 17.5 billion. Now we'll touch upon that when we do look at the net debt to EBITDA metric, but for REITs, for them to grow, they do have a large debt position, which does tend to increase. And again, we will look at that shortly in detail. Now, very briefly, looking at the other specialized REIT industry, we have Iron Mountain Corporation, Gaming and Leisure Properties, Lamar Advertising Company, as well as a few other well-known ones in the industry. Now, over the last year, we do see Vici Properties as one of the worst performing, down 7%, but we also really only have one that performed very well, which is Iron Mountain, up around 50%. Now, these do include those dividends reinvested, but we can see other than IRM, the others haven't had the greatest yearly performance. Now, when we expand that to the last five years, we actually see a slightly different story. We see the majority performing very well, Vici Properties themselves up 83%. IRM, a fantastic performance, up 177, and some other competitors, GLPI and LAMR, doing pretty strong as well. Do remember, though, just because Vici did return 83% over the last five years, past performance isn't necessarily an indicator of future performance. Now, in terms of institutional ownership, it does sit around 97%, and we did see around $2.53 billion worth of sales by these institutions over the last 12 months. However, we did see a lot more buying nearly double over the same period. 
And when we do take a look, not only quarter on quarter in 2023, more buying than selling, but in Q4, the latest quarter for those institutions, a lot more buying than selling, 2.31 billion worth, in fact, versus 987. So we can see not only the institutions bullish, but they have every single quarter over the last year bought a lot more than they have sold. Again, important to understand with institutions, it isn't something you should copy and always do your own due diligence. In terms of the insider screening, so we have the ticker symbol Vici, we have transactions, both buys and sells, minimum 100 shares over the last three months. And we can see there is nothing really to report, but always good to be transparent. We can extend that to the last year. And what we can see here, again, it does look to be one where insiders don't sell and insiders don't buy. So nothing really to note, but as always, transparency just to show that. So before we take a look at their dividend safety and some financial metrics, we can just run through a few recent acquisitions or deals that Vici Properties have had. We have discussed this in detail. So very briefly, on October last year, they did a sale and lease back of 38 bowling entertainment centers, which is diversifying slightly in terms of what they do, but still very much looking like a very strong performance. And we can see here the initial lease term is of around 25 years with a six five year renewal option. Now, when we do take a very quick look, we can see they do have a few different strategic rationales for this. But it would be interesting to know from your opinion whether or not you do see the bowling business model as one that is very attractive right now. Or is this an industry that has been dying over the last few years, as it is slightly different to when we do look at casinos and the hotel industries that Vici is prominently in. Then we look towards December, so only a few months ago, the Chelsea Piers New York transaction for Vici Properties. And essentially what they did, as you can see here, there are three Piers and a head house. They acquired the leasehold interest of Chelsea Piers in New York City and then subleased it back to them in a triple net lease master lease. So very positive as well. We can see Vici Properties isn't one that is just sitting still. They are doing a lot of deals and we do try and report on every single one of these and bring them to your attention. Again, we can see their strategic rationale and there are a lot of different things that Vici are trying to do with their business model. Again, they aren't solely looking just to the hotels, just to the casinos. Again, finally, on the more recent news in 2024, we see the youth sports investment with Kansas City. And again, for those that are more interested in understanding this, they essentially agreed to provide a construction loan of up to $105 million in financing to the affiliates of Homefield Kansas City. And we can see that they do essentially have the right here or the option to call the real estate assets of these companies and buildings. So lots of different movements from Vici themselves. And what I just wanted to bring to your attention, for those that maybe are new to Vici properties, they do have several tenants, and in fact, 12 with over 92 properties. Now, the weighted average lease of each one is around 41.5 years. So we're not talking one, two, three, four years. This is a very long term. And on top of that, we can see their annualized cash is around 39% for their largest tenant, which is Caesars. And MGM, we can see at 35%. So in total, that is sitting around 74% with the others in single digits. Now, when we do want to just bring a few things to your attention in terms of COVID 2020, now that seems like quite a long way away now. In terms of rent collection, they had 100%, which is very, very strong, especially when we do look at the mean for those in the industry sitting anywhere between 70 to 99%. On top of that, what is very, very positive is their remaining lease terms within their tenants at around 42 years on average. Again, the typical average is around 8 to 11 years. So very, very positive. We can also see the barriers to entry very, very high. Again, other industries, other competitors are looking like it could be fairly low. So in terms of their dividend safety, it does currently sit at a score of 50 borderline safe. We'll take a look at that shortly. Market cap 31 billion. It is a large cap company. Now, in terms of those recessionary metrics, given this was formed in 2017, we don't have any of that data available to us. So let's take a look at their growth. The latest increase, 6.4% in September 2023. Very positive to know. Above that minimum 4% we advocate on the channel just to keep up in line with inflation. And we can see four years of consecutive increases, which is nice when you couple that with this nice starting yield of around 5.6%. 
Now, dividend yield theory states the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average, 5.59 versus 5.03. So we have our first sign of undervaluation, although do bear in mind we're not looking at any of these models in isolation. We'll conclude towards the end. And we can see the forward P to FFO 13.3 versus 14.8, another sign of undervaluation. Although we do note that it's pretty much in line with the real estate sector P to FFO of 13.6. Free cash flow power, always what we put your attention to. However, for REIT, a lot more volatile. So we look at the adjusted FFO funds from operation power. For hotel REITs, we want to be a bit more specific, below 75%. Now we can see over the last few years, it has straddled around that. However, 2023 and 2024 expected that 75% level. So no real worries there so far based on this information. Adjusted funds from operation per share consistently increasing as well. Very nice to know. 2023, 2024, again, expected to be an increase from the previous year. And when we look at it percentage-wise, that is pretty positive in my opinion. 6% followed by a very large 15% and then around a 5% in 2024. So lots to like with Vici Properties. Again, when we look at sales growth, we seem for steady, moderate growth of 5 to 10%. 2020 to 2023, very, very strong double digit to their top line. And that is what we like to see from these REITs alongside their adjusted funds from Operation Per Share growing at a very, very strong rate. In terms of shares outstanding, now what we don't like is when companies dilute your position. However, over the long term with REITs, this is very typical. The reasons for this, for those that are new, is that they issue equity to fund property acquisitions because they essentially retain a little of that internally generated cash flow after paying dividends. Now, for those that do want to know about shares outstanding and companies that do a lot of share buybacks, we have released one of our latest articles running through very strong companies that look to be undervalued that are buying back a lot of shares. We also do a lot of other articles completely free. You can sign up by clicking on that pinned comment below. In terms of the total sales, then, for those that like to see the numbers, 200 million in 2017 to 3.47 billion in 2023. ROIC, one of my seven golden dividend metrics, and you can catch the other six in one of the free weekly newsletters. For companies, I want to see over 10%. For REITs, 3 to 5%. Nice to note for Vici, 5% for the last full year. 2023 at 8% expected, looking very strong. Does give us faith that management are then able to effectively allocate their capital. Operating margin, very healthy. It is very inconsistent, but even the lowest year in 2022, looking very strong. 2023 expected 91% level looking very, very healthy. Now, the main issue that we do have with Vici in terms of their dividend safety, first and foremost, is this net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. Now, this correlates to two things. One, the dividend safety and two, the balance sheet strength. It shows us the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of capital cash. Now, personally, I like to see below 5.5. If you want to be specific for hotel REITs, you could argue below 3.5, but it does come under the question whether or not you see Vici Properties as a REIT or if you want to be more specialized as a hotel REIT. Nonetheless, 6.46 was what it was in 2022, so it'd take them 6.46 years to pay off, as we can see, all of their debt and net of cash on hand. 2023 expected to be low at 6.02, still pretty high. 2024, this is what I like to see. It is coming down to that 5.5 level that I personally look at at 5.57 so it is moving in the right direction you could argue at a fairly slow rate but nonetheless based on the information we have whilst it says borderline safe i would say based on this that it does seem to be safe for now although it will be interesting to see the information that comes out of their earnings report tomorrow so let's jump into the valuation as always if you enjoy the content values being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop so let's jump into the first model that we're using for Vici Properties, the multiples valuation model, companies in the similar sector and size. We have their P multiples as we can see here. The average, we get the intrinsic value then of $32. We can see our first undervaluation signal, but as always, do bear in mind we're not looking at any of these models in isolation. We then have the dividend discount model with the yearly dividends as we can see here and the growth rate. Average around 8%. Now, we've been a lot more conservative at 4%. And with that, we get an intrinsic value of, again, $44, showing a strong sign of undervaluation. We then have the DCF model with the free cash flow year on year. Average growth rate, very high. We've gone a lot more conservative, below analyst target at 8%. In conjunction with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding. 
we have a third sign of undervaluation. So the intrinsic value for Vici properties in today's episode is just the average of these three models coming to $38. Now, when we take a look at this, you can also, if you want, click on that pinned comment below, grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list. So we typically start off with a margin of safety of 10%. We use this if it meets the three criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. If we believe that it is a buy up to $34, at 15% up to $32, and we keep going till it's near the current trading price, 20% up to $30, 25% around 28. So it is right now around that 20% up to $30. And that is pretty much how it has been trading for a quite a fair amount of time. It is where I have been adding quite a lot of shares on a daily basis right now. And I do believe it is severely undervalued in terms of Wall Street and what their forecast is. Well, they think over the next 12 months, a little bit lower than the intrinsic value, but they have a price target of $36. They see upside of 21%. So they also see Vici properties as a strong buy. It's not to mean the share price could go down another dollar or another dollar and a half. But as always, when you can't time the market, in my opinion, the best thing to do is dollar cost average, whether that's daily, weekly or monthly. As always, though, I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Is Vici Properties one you've also been adding? Maybe it's one you've been looking to sell for whatever reason. Do let us know. And as always, if you enjoy the content, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.